Hi there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today we're going to be talking about 3D printing in combat robotics. The number one way to get started in the combat robotics world today is to get a 3D printer and start experimenting with it. It's the most universally flexible tool used by robot builders today. There are many possible uses in robots of all weight classes. Battle bots and heavyweights or larger robots find that it's useful for making complex metal parts that aren't possible with traditional machining tech, although metal 3D printing is kind of ungodly expensive. It's also helpful to use Mark Forrest continuous fiber filled plastic prints, which can be almost as strong as or stronger than aluminum. On the fly additions, upgrades, supports, mounts, etc. are all possible. Valkyrie uses lots of stainless steel printed parts and lots of carbon fiber nylon parts, as many other robots do in BattleBots. In the 12 to 30 pound mid-size robot weight class, tougher plastics are capable replacements for almost any power transmission components. All of these could have flexible mounting options and custom tooth counts for your pulleys and gears. It's often the case that nylon is plenty strong for drive components like gears, wheels, pulleys, maybe even a weapon pulley. Electronics mounts and boxes are common, especially with glass, carbon fiber, or Kevlar filled nylon filaments. Just take a look at Robert Cowan's crippling depression videos to see more of what he's done with it. In the insect classes, almost entire robots can be printed from PLA, ABS, or PETG for the plastic ant class, and printed robot chassis are still super common in all of the insect classes, often utilizing flexible TPU, TPE, nylon, etc. Printed components can be used for all kinds of custom attachments, just take a look at how I use them in Division. You can make brackets and mounts for all sorts of components to interface with laser or water jet cut metal parts. In every weight class, it can be very helpful to prototype machined parts with 3D printing, and it's a strategy employed by multi-million dollar companies and bot builders alike. 3D printed custom molds can be used to cast wheels from silicone or urethane, among other things. Flexible filaments also make fantastic shock mounts, tires, treads, or even timing belts in a pinch. 3D printing can also be great for convenience items like sharp edge covers, last minute replacement parts, and adjustments. Printing machining jigs and fixtures or alignment or drill template guides can save time and frustration when machining. Just see how I did this with Division's uprights. And also, the thick bar used on Bloodsport. Lost PLA or investment casting allows for dirt, cheap, complex metal part fabrication. It's often used in jewelry making as well. And a quick and easy substitute for custom spacers, plastic washers, and plenty of other parts can be almost immediately 3D printed with nylon or even softer plastics. Plus, you can do much, much more. 3D printing is an almost limitlessly useful technology. Helpful tips and tricks. Working in Fusion 360 and many other CAD packages, you can set custom densities for printed parts rather than modeling them as 100% dense weight. Layer bond strength can be as much as 40% weaker than material strength, so orient your prints properly. Similarly, perimeters contribute way more to the strength of your parts than the infill does. Make sure to use lots of walls and less infill to save weight and maintain strength. Try to design parts without overhangs and that print without supports. This is critical for nylons and other materials where you have to print with the cooling fan turned off. Even if your chassis will ultimately be printed in Nylon X or another expensive filament, it's worth printing it first in a cheap alternative like PLA to save money and to find out if there's anything that has to be changed. Alloy 910 is $68 per kilogram versus $15 to $20 per kilogram for PLA. If you need to thread into plastics, plastite screws like number 6 or number 8 screw sizes especially work great in printed pilot holes. For bigger bolted connections that don't see much axial load, machine screws will work fine with modeled threads. I did try modeled threads on FDM machines for smaller holes, but the resolution's too poor to really print threads smaller than M5 or number 12. It's also a great idea to use metal nuts, especially square nuts, pressed into printed parts for very small fasteners where the threads will be loaded axially. Melt-in brass threaded inserts are also a great option to increase the surface area loaded in shear, but they generally aren't any better for pull-out strength. Nuts or inserts should be used on any threaded connections that will be frequently unthreaded and rethreaded, like a top panel or a battery access panel. Don't forget, plastic can flex, but this can be advantageous to make parts snap fit, act as hinges, or simply give under load. This Thingiverse customizer link can make any tying pulley under the sun. Fusion 360 also has a spur gear generator, but the helical gear add-ons I prefer since it increases the root area of the teeth. You can mirror a helical gear to make a herringbone gear if you're certain that your gear alignment will stay true. Great YouTube channels and resources. Where to get your models from? GrabCAD. 
While not just geared for 3D printing, it is a fantastic resource. It even has some full combat robot designs, including one of my very own, my first ever robot, Karma. Thingiverse, obviously, is basically the de facto 3D printing model hub. It has some amazing customizable SCAD creations, like the timing pulley modeler I showed earlier. Prusa Printers is an up-and-coming 3D model slash printable file sharing service. Very new, but already better than Thingiverse in many ways, including providing material and print time estimates based on uploaded G-code. I have my Prusa enclosure and camera arm models on there currently, and I'll likely upload a lot more in the future. And finally, YouTubers. Maker's Muse is also a combat robot builder based in Australia. He has some really awesome videos about how to design your models in Fusion for better 3D printability, removing supports, and just generally is an awesome resource for 3D printer reviews and other 3D printing technology videos. Make Anything is similarly a maker who does all sorts of different projects that often involve lots of 3D printing and has tons of 3D printer reviews. 3D Printing Nerd is pretty much in the same boat as all of these, but his channel is a lot more focused at practical printing, 3D printer reviews, and exploring different filaments. Thomas, Thomas Sandlitterer has a lot more scientific videos about discussing what the advantages of 3D printing with different materials can be. He also has a number of really technical 3D printer reviews. CNC Kitchen is probably the most technical 3D printing channel as he built his own tensile testing machine that he uses to test the strength of different materials, different layer thicknesses, different wall thicknesses, and all sorts of things to get the absolute highest performance possible out of your prints. Teaching Tech is a relatively new 3D printing channel. He has a ton of 3D printer reviews and also reviews mods that you can do to printers like the Ender 3 to make them even more capable. And Uncle Jesse is another 3D printing channel where he does a lot of cosmetic prints and other just cool knickknacks, but he's been exploring a lot more resin printing recently. 3D printing companies. Prusa is probably the best well-known with extremely high quality kits that are well worth the cost. I personally use a Prusa i3 Mark III S as my main printer now, and it's been serving me great for months. Creality is the maker of the legendary Ender series as well as the CR10, which pretty much made 3D printing mainstream by making them low cost but still fairly reliable. Matter Hackers, they sell basically all of the things, printers, filament, you name it. Markforged are the makers of printers capable of printing Onyx, which is like a 30% carbon fiber filled nylon, as well as continuous fiber filled parts with their Mark I and Mark II printers. They also have awesome research papers on printed parts. If there was ever a good time to buy a 3D printer and start experimenting with it, now while we're all quarantined is probably it. So I'd highly recommend that people who have enough of a budget for it might look into getting something like the $180 Ender 3 or $230 Ender 3 Pro and start messing about with the wonderful world of 3D printing to start experimenting with combat robot designs. I'll be uploading even more content about my mostly 3D printed Antweight bot mini mulcher in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for more of that. Like and subscribe if this is what you're interested in seeing, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching!